This is Stephanie at High Terra Stitching. I'm back with the beginning of a beautiful pinwheel quilt. This quilt came from the June 2021 American Patchwork Magazine, page 78, Peaceful Pinwheels. I was attracted to this quilt because of all the colors that you can put in it. And also, as I went along, I really liked, it was almost a build-as-you-go quilt, very carefully making each block. And where in the churn, churn dash, well, I made all of the blocks first and then laid those out. Well, now you're going to sort of pick your colors that you want to go with. And as we go, you'll see that you're going to make, well, actually make one block at a time. And as you make that block, you're going to add it to the quilt that you're working on. So let's get ready to have some fun with some colors. This is the picture from the magazine, and you can see the different pinwheels. And here is my first sample block. And you can see that it's made of a bunch of little squares put together. One block will take four white squares that are 10 inches. It will take one center color that's a 10 inch block and then four more colors that will be 10 inch blocks. And you can see I've set out colors. When I first started, I didn't put out all these colors. I just picked my center color that I wanted to do and then I picked four more colors to go with it. And you're saying, well, I don't know where we're going. Well, just stick with me and you'll see. Then you want to take each one of your white 10 inch squares and you're going to draw diagonal lines, which will be your cutting lines, and then you're going to add the 1 4th inch stitching on each side of the um, cutting line. And here again, I went back to that nifty little tool I had that'll tell me the center. So I draw my line from diet from the corner to corner, and then I just move this over and get my fourth inch on one side and fourth inch on the other side. And I started out hand stitching this to see if it could be done, and it really can. Once you get all these lines drawn, then go in where they intersect. And you're going to have four places. Those are going to be your starting lines for your stitching. So start, if you're going to hand stitch, if you're sewing on the machine, you can go straight across. Just start there and go straight down, start there and go straight down. And do all four of those. But don't cut them yet. Wait to cut. You're going to need um, five of those. One for your center block and then your four other colors. Then you're going to stack one white and one print face to face, and you're going to sew on the stitch lines. And one thing that seemed to really help was not to stitch on the lines, but to stitch inside the line a little bit. Because when you get done, you want a block that's four and a half inches. And if you stitch to that inside, because you are going to trim these up just a little bit, then you're going to see how close it is. The first block I did, I was often trimmed. But when I did the second uh, block and I moved to sewing inside that line, I had one perfect one. And then the others in there were, were very, very close. So let's go back to you've got that marked. Now, before you cut your cutting lines, I want you to take and fold your box in half, your square, and lightly press it. That's so you can see it. It doesn't have to be that heavy. And then open it up and press it the other direction lightly so that you can see where the line is. And then you're ready to cut. So what you're going to do is you can cut what I did now since I had this all set up was I cut straight up that line and then I cut up my fold line. 
and just for illustration I'm gonna pull it out don't mess with yours when you're cutting it I'm gonna pull it out and show you that I've got it part right there all right then what you want to do is continue keeping it laying flat and everything cutting carefully and cut on the inside of your double lines cut your folds and all the way around and all of a sudden you're gonna see you've got two four six eight nice little squares and you're gonna pull the square out and remember how we cut off the little ears and it really more goes at a triangle back at that direction back the way my nails going cut that one off and then turn around and oh this one I've already got right how about that and cut that one off and I finger press the back just to see how it was going to lay. And there you can see I have my first square. Well, this one was nice. I'm getting better at this. So that when I laid my ruler down on there to square it up, and if you have one that has a diagonal line in it, that even make it easier. But you could see this one was just right on there, very little. So I'm probably not even going to worry about trimming on it. But I can use it as the one to help know if my next ones are right because I can line it up and then just follow the edges and then you'll have all eight of those and they'll be the same and go ahead and just pin those together you want to keep your sets of colors together you're going to go ahead and you're going to do that with all of your white blocks and color blocks together and you'll have a, a five stacks then and this is just a reminder of what happens on that part that you open it and lay it flat carefully cut on the cut lines and fold lines open your seams and stack your set of pieces and repeat and trim as needed to make sure that they're four and a half inch squares you know I told you before sometimes I don't do that well this is one time when it is very helpful so now I've come back to my planning board and I want to suggest that you have a place if you're not working next to your sewing machine come up with a system that you can move the blocks from where you are to your machine if you're by your machine this won't be a problem here is my first sample block again and if you're really looking close you can see that I made a mistake on the first one but it's not going to affect affect it but I had um, four colors picked out of the middle colors when I picked out first then I picked out supposed to pick out four but you can see I picked out three so I actually have used the same color twice and um, but that's going to be on the edge of the quilt it's not going to matter and so I was going to fix it on the next one and I want to tell you to make a quilt that um, where the colors look right you want to make at least two blocks that are the same of each of your center colors if you see this one is this uh, nice pattern in the middle that one I want to have two of those the next one that I did in the same set was a green center block and I used all four of my um, all eight of my greens up and then I started with my new color but if you'll notice when you slide back over to the sample block at the very top there is part of that brown that I did in the first block and if you go down here's the little bugs that I did in the sample block on the left and the bugs are on the right <clears throat> and that's how this is going to build as you go and so as you're going you're going to have a little collection of blocks that you're going to use left over so don't get rid of anything keep them together and then when I did this block, because I used some of those, I have a yellow left and another, a different red pattern. And I want you to show, look up here and see, there's where the yellow star for the next one starts. And there's the red. Now you're going to see that the red is hanging. So really, if that's probably going to be the top of my quilt. So I might have that part of that left over. But in the next block... That I haven't even started yet there's going to be a red section there's going to be a new block and then it's going to have yellow around it and then a new uh, the two new colors on the end 
And the funny thing about the pinnacle in the middle is, if you look at it, they don't go straight. They go at an angle. So, for example, the very top one is pointing north and to the west. This one is pointing um, north to the east. This one is south to the east, and this one is south to the west. So when you start, place your primary color first, like the big green one or the big um, plaid one, and then you'll know where your other colors are going to go around there. And just by and just by way of help, I went and used one of the sample pattern parts and you can see where my primary red is that is one whole block and but then my black becomes the next one down but it wasn't a primary and then once you get your block set like you want it then go ahead and put so the four on the top row together so the middle four together and then of course the third and the fourth rows and you can lightly press those open or to the side the way that you like to do it. Then lay it down and make sure that you've got all the rows in the right place. And you'll say there's nothing to that. Well, all you have to do is turn one the wrong way one time and say, Oh my gosh, i got to rip all that out. And if I had just looked at it, I'd know that it fit just perfectly. This is a great project. And I'm actually going to keep going and see how far I can get. And here again, I've picked materials that went together. And when I run out of those, that tend to be when I stop, except on, especially on something that I'm practicing. This is Stephanie at Hightower Stitching. If I have forgotten anything or there's anything that I need that you will need to know, I'll add it in the description. If you liked this or enjoyed something in it, I hope you will hit subscribe and like. And thank you for watching.